All right, welcome back, everybody. We have just finished two rounds here on Tuesday Night Eternal. Going into round three, we've got the pairings ready to go. By popular demand, we will be viewing John Holio's Glimpse deck, and we'll have the main camera on his deck so that we can see the sweet top decks coming off the warp. Again, that. <clears throat> All right, and we also have an announcement here. So you're not going to show right now, but... The Overmaster here, our guest host for tonight, was very generous in bringing a spoiler to show on the Tuesday Night Eternal coverage tonight. So thank you for that, Overmaster. No problem, no problem. I'm just there to support the community. So what... I lost 35,000 intro for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we are going to do is we are going to show that after the four Swiss rounds. So we finished two Swiss rounds, we got two more Swiss rounds left, then we're going to cut to the top four and do a final four playoff. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and spoil that card um, right after the end of the Swiss rounds, before the top four, before the semifinal matches. So we got two rounds to go here, and then we'll get, uh, get take a look at that sweet, sweet spoiler. All right, so we have got John Holio on the Glimpse deck versus Jedi EJ on Mono Time. What do you think of this matchup here? Um, well, it's the same matchup as last time. Uh, well, in our first matchup was even handed, even Time versus this deck, this uh, Rat Storm deck, I guess is uh, how you would uh, call it. Um, storm being a, a, a for, for those of you who don't know, Storm is a turn play a bunch of spells and take turn it does something. It's, it's not important. But <laughs> that's, where the, that's where the origins of the name is. From. Now, is it, uh, it? Are they going to attack and risk this, uh, this Cookie Master? Hmm. Ooh, that's bold, yeah. but yeah, they're going to do it. And Jedi's, yeah, it's a snap block, obviously, there, yep. Um, so, yep, Jedi lead off with an even-handed golem, a really nice start. Actually, Jedi's got kind of the perfect hand that you want to see with this even deck. Uh, he's got the even-handed golem, got the Devotee of the Sands, the Sand Warrior, the Obelisk, got pretty much all the all the goodies in his hand. Um, now, question, I don't know if you've played much of the even-handed time, even time deck, but when you have Devotee of the Sands and golem in the same deck, in the starting hand, do you normally run out golem on two, or do you get the, the power booster on turn? to oh i i would usually get the power boost mostly because in general like even hand golem is more like right mm -hmm. so so if you already have cards in hand that you can play on or yeah if you can play like multiple cards in mm -hmm. turn two like there's no need for you to draw more cards you already have your plays lined up for you right and I think especially, be, I think the, the even restriction matters a lot there um, because because you have no three drops in the deck, obviously, because it's an even deck, going from turn two to turn four is really crucial because you can play a four drop or you can play two two drops. So being able to skip that by playing your Devotee on turn two and going right to turn four there, I, th I think is really important uh, for that deck. Dropping an obelisk here. Um, I mean, these you look you look at the first four cards that Jedi played, and these are like the four cards you want to curve out with. You got you got the golem, you got the power booster, you got the zero cost spell, and you got the obelisk. Uh, what more can Jedi ask for at that point? John Holio here, you know, doing doing the basics of what their deck does, uh, but but still needs to draw some gas here. You know, they've got the two Cryptic Masters, which is pretty nice, followed by two Eternity Cores. So there's going to be lots of power on the battlefield here, um, but really missing any sort of any sort of punch after that. They're just going to have two big vanilla units. Yeah, we'll see. They do have a, uh, a double Cryptic Essence. Mm -hmm. um, I think they are going to put their Trinity, but it's, it's really it's solid into current board. Whoa, Scorpion coming out. Hmm. Do they think that uh, John Holy was going to actually um, swing out? I, 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 I don't think I would have, but uh, I think that play. Next mm -hmm. turn, they could put a Retro Corsia into an attorney for but getting any value off of Retro Corsia mm -hmm. is really, really good. Because of the way it fil filters, of course, uh, it draws it from the top uh, of your deck mm -hmm. and, um, and not from any part of your deck. Yeah, that is uh, huge. It, 
Yeah, that that's a subtle interaction that I think a lot of people either don't realize or overlook is being able to draw the top power of your deck um, or it is very different from drawing a random power from your deck. Uh, really smooths out your draws, enables you to, to to draw more powerful things. Not a lot of cards in Eternal do that. I think there's only a handful, right? Uh, but it's a very powerful effect and, and subtle if you don't realize it right away. That being said, the other day, I, I put in Leopard Corp and started drawing a bunch of cards at the top of my deck and I still drew power. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely can. Oh, good. Nice, nice top deck here. Jedi did not have the eighth power in hand, but did draw it off the top of the deck. Going to boost all these units up. Still not amazing attacks here uh, with the two 5-5 five, five blockers. Uh, do, you, do you fling here and, and try to push through damage? Oh, they, drew a, uh, they drew the power for the turn. Yeah, and then this, yeah, you're gonna have to push here. You're gonna be able to hit John Holyo pretty low, but you are gonna lose two of your units. Two units, and they can annihilate the seven four. It looked, it looked to, to them like it was a uh, surefire bet for lethal, right? Yeah, it would have been lethal, but uh, it's definitely not gonna be. Whoa. Okay, so you know, uh, they didn't actually need to block with that O three. And, um, oh, well, they only have, they only have one power, right? Was that was that just right. lethal? Look at that! They could not do the annihilate there. That may have just been yeah, completely thought it may have been nothing that uh, John Holyoke could do on the blocks there. So we didn't get to see the sweet uh, warp action there in game one, um, but hopefully we can. I forgot that uh, they only had one power up. To be honest, yeah, uh, they could have blocked in a way that they could have dealt one less damage. Mm -hmm. I think I don't think it would have mattered uh, to have an extra turn there. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but that was, you know, we saw the mono time deck can have some really busted draws, and as we were saying earlier, that was that was almost one of the perfect draws that you can imagine from that deck. Just all the pieces you needed in the early game. You drew the zero drops and the two drops when you wanted them, and then you drew the four drops and five and four drops and six drops when you wanted them later in the game. Um, it's a lot easier when it happens that way, but sometimes you can see the deck when it happens the other way around, <laughs> and you draw the wrong half of the deck. You draw all the four and six drops, and we've seen that happen too. Both, both decks were lying there. Uh, I was having certain draws, uh, certain draws in order to uh, enact the game plan. I think. Although I think the uh, even handed on deck. So. Yeah, very very consistent for sure. All right, what do you think of this hand for John Holyoke? You got two glimpses in the hand, a Smuggler and a Talir Sanctum. Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's something. Well, what are they going to get out of the market? Um, uh, I'll get focus, to be honest. Mm, dumping ground, nice. That's so funny. <laughs> Um, John, uh, Jedi's hand, not quite the busted start we saw last time, but not bad. Uh, two scribes, one devotee, a Talir's favorite, a sand warrior, and then you got a little bit of top end. You got one Titan and two mystic ascendants in hand. So they've got a lot of action. Uh, they have a lot of things to play out this turn. Uh, they don't really even need a golem with this hand yet. It almost would be better to be able to draw that later once you, once you deploy all these threats. Um, so... Then Holyo got the uh, the swirl of the sand. I'm not too sure what they were thinking about with the swirl of the sand. So oh, I guess they were. They're, I'm sure they're going to hit obelisk. Yeah. yeah. Obelisk. Yeah, that, that's probably a good play for sure. Get that get that out of the way. I'm just going to get their course here. Yeah, I mean, getting the value off of their course here is probably pretty important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's not go. Yeah, no bias at all. I'm just watching the Holyo. So um. Hopefully they can't deal with the um, with the fortune from there. So I don't know. Like a whole, it's a value off of it. Yeah, I think it was smart to get that Swirl of the Sands because it's kind of your one best way to beat Obelisk, but it's interesting that that's not really what Jedi's hand is doing right now. This this hand is more of a double Mystic Ascendant Nash Sandstorm Titan draw, uh, not not exactly the Obelisk draw, but of course, you know, Obelisk is powerful no matter no matter what your draw looks like. Uh, there's, there's a double play power, and um, this is, it's, 
It's gonna hurt. But hopefully it's not gonna be that. I'm gonna take the many more turns of this. Uh, of no, but no power for Jedi. They're gonna have to play this to Lear's favor. They they tried to get power off the scribe, and there's there's power number five here. Um, so they'll start to be able to play this if they hit. They can play the Sand Warrior, and they can play Titan next turn, so they can keep deploying these threats. Um, and then if they're able to get to six and start deploying these Mystic Ascendants, it's going to be it's going to be pretty hard to come back from that. I think this puzzle isn't a great draw here because, uh, well, I guess they can play a Pocus here that that stems the bleeding on on the ground besides the uh, besides the Crimson Titan. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait. I mean, they're, they're, they're planning on playing the Evan Doom Pokemon. Yeah, but... But to, I, me, but to me, I think they could have uh, played that main phase. Play the, the, I think the, or, or, the, or the Scorpion Moss. But actually, the Scorpion Moss may be even better. Although, if Jedi knows that... They did get the Wasp. There you go. Okay, so they got the Wasp. They, they must have been planning to do that. That's why they didn't do it yeah. during their turn. Good. But still going pretty low on life here, though. I'm going to go down to eight. Another Titan to follow it up. Not so. I don't know. They might have to just buy a blind glimpse here. And this is another reason that the even time deck is so powerful is because we saw last game how it has some of the busted draws with Obelisk and going wide units. But then if it doesn't get that draw, sometimes it just beats you with, with these legendaries, right? It just beats you with the Titans, and then you've got Mystic Ascendants, and you've got free 3-3s. Three you can just play a value game and, and win that way, too. Yeah, the and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice it. They reduce a bunch of damage on the other side. Yeah, that'll slow it down a little bit, but... See, uh, I mean, they're not dead next turn unless they have an obelisk. Well, actually, even an obelisk. Right, they're gonna go to four. Yeah, they're gonna go to four. Ooh, here's a golem. Let's see what they can draw into. No obelisk yet, but probably land the devotee. That's gonna get him up to six to be able to start deploying this Nash and the Mystic Ascendants. Although, I first here, just to see what's on yeah, the I think so. Okay, all right, That's really good that helps. Yep, yeah, that helps for sure. Yeah, I agree. Mystic Ascendant is sweet. Uh, it's interesting that in this, uh, in this match, in this game, you have the two Mystic Ascendants, and you almost don't need them. <laughs> like, I, I don't think he'll even play them here. Um, uh, I think Mystic Ascendant is definitely a... Uh, I think it's past its prime, I think. I think it's good in this deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, very good I, in this deck. Yeah. Uh, Mystic Ascendant being, a, being a, an extremely good preparer in you know, multiple sets now. Yeah. So, which is unfortunate, I really, I really do like to play uh, yeah, yeah, but that's one of the benefits of one of the beauties of expedition here, um, being able to experience these cards that uh, are powerful, but maybe don't see as much in the competitive ranked scene. 